what is the project about? Well, you have seen on the right, if you look at the, at the video, okay, some events may, may or may not happen uh, in mountain areas. And the point is that the underlying processes are extremely complex, okay, because they involve, um, uh, of course, temperature, uh, uh, whether the sun is shining or not, uh, wind, uh, humidity, uh, precipitation, uh, snow coverage, soil, rock, and all these things are highly complex and interrelated. And um, so uh, the hypothesis of the project is that uh, by a combination of environmental sensing of different modalities at different spatial and temporal scales, one can understand these processes better and do a better modeling and also have a better understanding uh, about prediction. Okay, so, so understanding uh, future risks. The other thing that's more related to, uh, well, uh, information technology is that wireless sensor networks can help in order to get all of these data, okay, and, and therefore understanding and quantify these phenomena better. And this is not so easy to do. Why? Because uh, these systems should work long term and autonomously, okay, so low energy budget. They should be reasonably cheap. They should yield uh, reliable data, and uh, and of course uh, this in a very hostile environment. So this is a challenge we're trying to uh, to address in in the project. And uh, well, this is just uh, written down here again. So in contrast to current methods, we try to do this with uh, cheaper and wireless networks. And these are the the uh, challenges we have combination of various sensor modalities, different scales in time and space, dynamic operation, autonomous and long-term technology. Okay, so this is somehow the overall platform. Uh, so uh, classical sensor network, uh, measuring various uh, sensing modalities and then transmitting them to some sort of base station uh, it's, uh, and then transmitting it to a host and combining various modalities, also synthetic aperture radio imaging and uh, high resolution imaging. Okay, so uh, how can we do this? Um, because we have this non-deterministic environment, there are two, well, global things we, we could do. One is to apply formal methods in order to design systems that are reliable and have predictable behavior. And I think last year we talked a little bit about methods we do here. And this time I will say a few more words about what we did in terms of testing uh, the, the systems we are deploying. Um, so, we have actually two sensor networks, okay? You have the physical environment, and then there's a sensor network, of course, that's deployed and that's trying to sense this physical environment. But at least in the lab environment, there's a second sensor network that's sensing actually the operation of the one that will be deployed later. So, it's sensing whether our target sensor network is working correctly. Okay? And it's trying to do this in different modalities, so it's the functional correctness, but also in terms of other quantities like timing behavior and also power behavior. So there are of course various approaches uh, available and other people have done this also. The main point here is that the system does it, as I said, with several modalities and has local intelligence. So all the sensor nodes that are sensing our sensor network have storage and local intelligence in order to really understand what is going on in the system that will be then later on deployed. Okay, so this is just how the hardware looks like and a few nodes have been done and uh, they can connect to different sorts of target architectures. Okay, what do we do then with the data? Well, you measure the data, so they are delivered by the sensing sensor network, okay, and um, they are like, like here the power consumption and then you uh, either manually or with a formal uh, conformance test you can check whether the system is working correctly. And I explained something about this already in the last, last meeting. Okay, so this is something we did in terms of testing and uh, now let's look what happens in terms of the platform. So I said already <coughs> last time that um, the uh, field site has been selected in cooperation with the uh, Federal Office of the Environment and using the synthetic aperture, aperture radar data, complicated word, okay. And, um, and we um, 
have been designing low-cost uh, devices and sensing stations that are deployed. Okay? And we did this relatively early in the project so that the science partners have data early on in order to de develop their methods. Okay? So this is what is currently uh, deployed. Uh, you see uh, several GPS sensors on, on the field site, uh, meteor meteorological stations, cameras, and this is uh, installation started August 2010 and it's working since August 2011. Um, okay, let me, let me go back. Um, so last time I also explained a little bit how we do the hardware design and the methodology. You see this is still a relatively clumsy station, okay, and you see here actually the box that is also running on the drums in the uh, OpenSense project, at least partly, okay, the main design. <coughs> And, uh, and this will be replaced in the next generation by, by, um, by a GPS sensor and, and sensing mask that, that uh, contains internally the corresponding processing and communication devices. So low power multi-hop communication devices. Okay, so what I tried to do and, uh, um, in, 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 in the presentation, I, I tried to let you understand a little bit this spatial pipeline, okay? where we have this wireless uh, sensor network and the data are transmitted to a base station where GSN is running and how this is built. I tried to a little bit uh, explain about the functional pipeline. Okay, you have the sensor data, they need pre-processing, data cleaning. I said a little bit about how you do this, removing packets, uh, understanding the system health, uh, then the extraction of the precise location with additional information you need, and of course then the geophysical modeling, uh, which needs models, simulation, and maybe also other modalities. And then of course the goal is to understand the processes and, and the predictions. Um, well, besides building things, we also publish stuff. Okay, this is what, what should be done. Uh, um, and these are the people working in the project. Okay, uh, first part is the group of Jan Beutel and myself. Then Stefan Gruber and his group Alan Geiger, Tatze Strotzi, and Hugo Retzel. 